Good morning, welcome back. We're heading off about 40 minutes away to the little village of Yoxford. Not famous for a whole amount, other than both of my parents say that it's a very nice place to go. We've only got a week left in the area, so I want to make the most of visiting these little villages. It's semi-famous, semi-famous for having a good choice of antique shops and a pleasing selection of cafes. The drizzle outside has just stopped, so I think we've caught it at the perfect time. So let's head off. 40 minutes, almost directly. You said 30 minutes. Yeah, I know, but I have to do this to entice you to actually come on the bike, because I know that about 30 minutes is your limit. So <laughs> saying 40 minutes makes a significant difference. The truth is we're heading off 40 minutes northeast from Ipswich. You know, it's a never-ending cycle. I always say that I like to keep the Bonneville standard, and it's true, but I just can't help myself. Now I've got the exhaust on the bike, I've fallen in love with it again, and there are a few other bits and pieces I want to get. One of which is a center stand for the bike, because it is my personal opinion that all bikes should come as standard with a center stand, because it will just make oiling my chain, general maintenance, so much easier. You don't need to do a close-up because it's embarrassing, but my chain is covered in mud and rusty and it's just laziness. I need to get a center stand so I can lift it up, quickly spin the wheel and spray it. But now I've got to move the bike three inches and spray and move three inches and spray because I've lost my bike lift somewhere. I need a center stand. Because it's a bit more winter focused now. So this has come out of hibernation. This is the Triumph, I love this. Triumph Beck 2 jacket. Monica's got one as well, and I think it's one of, nicely done, nicely done, one of the nicest looking ladies biking jackets. It's in a kind of olive green, exactly the same as this, but, but it's specifically for women. It is stunning. These are really expensive. I think they're about 400 pounds, but they're beautiful quality wax cotton, nice thermal lining, and just, they feel so hard wearing. Little tip, I'm six foot one, 80 kilos. This is size large, so I would suggest slightly size up. If you're in between sizes, opt for the slightly larger size. Jeans, hood jeans, my favorite. I wear these for, I would say, 80% of all rides. These are the SK11 jeans. So it's the normal fit jean. It's not slim fit, it's not tapered, it's just a nice classic fit. Fits over the boots perfectly and they're all day comfort. They're also very heavy duty, so brilliant in the winter because they're properly warm. And I've got the Riding Sun's boots. These are from XL Moto, and these have now become very possibly my favorite boots. All day comfort, brilliant quality. I must have worn them about 30 times now, and they're very, very good. Durable boots with This is a great thing about having panniers again. Just chuck stuff in. Monica's glove. Racer 1927, that's a French company. Nice winter glove with thermal lining. And that is called Legacy. The Legacy glove. Racer 1927 and, again, I didn't plan this. Again, French company, Racer 1927. Winter gloves. They're good up to, in reality, about eight degrees. Below that, you're going to have ice cold hands, but they're fairly low profile, and I quite like them, looks wise. I'm not going to lie and say they're unbelievably good, looks wise, but they're decently good, and they're probably my favorite winter gloves that I've found so far, because they've got a mixture of being low profile and decently warm-ish. Helmets over there, but I wear the same helmets all the time. And a light lock lock. The light lock lock. This is brilliant because it's very safe, but also if you've got a rear rack like this, I just hook the helmets onto the back and it's very good. So you don't have to carry helmets around with you everywhere and they're completely secure. That's one of the best things. One thing I hate, carrying helmets around when you get somewhere, carrying any biking gear around. I want to get off the bike and it'd be like I haven't ridden a bike. Just go around in normal gear when I get somewhere. So that's total game changer with the rear rack. It has just started raining. Look, the forecast is for it to stop in about 20 minutes. So 
We've got our waterproof jackets. Let's just go. This is my choice. The Snug in Wesselton. We went to Oxford, couldn't find anywhere obvious to eat, so we've driven or ridden three miles here, but this is brilliant. Just chatting to the owner. The grandma makes the apple cake. That apple pie was baked fresh today. The cakes to the left, the cherry almond and orange layer, that was baked by the mum, and the auntie, I believe, baked the scones this morning. Family run, the family get involved with everything. I think the aunt is an accountant full time and then bakes the cakes on the side as well. So everything here is fresh. We're getting bean chili con carne and then I have to. I mean, if this is all baked fresh today, I have to grab a scone or a cake or something. But it's a beautiful little spot, tiny little village, all traditionally styled, and it's been opened for five years. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Monica? I did, I did okay. It's not yes, bad. Yes, very good. Well done. But you had an apple pie for breakfast. Yeah, I know this is the problem. Monica's mum keeps baking apple pies. It's not fair. And then she leaves <laughs> it on the side and expects me not to eat it. So until the apple pie is gone, my breakfast is just a coffee with a slice of apple pie. And then I, I look at the apple pie again and there's still some left. And I think, well, well can't be left there, just sitting there, not being eaten. So then I take another slice. This is from Dave's. I don't, this isn't the name of the antiques place, but Dave owns the antique shop that we were just chatting to about an hour or so ago. Monica actually pointed this out. Harley Davidson book. I don't know what year it's from. It's got to be the 90s, but I just love comparing the Harley Davidson lifestyle and style in general to that of the British bikes, the Triumphs, because for us, it's all wax, cotton, gray, and moody. But for the US, what you get is <laughs> the American dream, freedom. This is slightly how I see myself <laughs> on the beaches of Suffolk on the Triumph. Just replaced the Harley Davidson with You look the like Triumph. that in Bali. I look like this in Bali. This is how I imagine myself looking. Look at the trainers, the, the toned body. Mm -hmm. The beautiful long curly hair. And there's another one of my favorites, which I believe is coming up here. Oh, but just look at the style here. This isn't fair. These people are adding two to three inches of height 
with these shoes and the moustache. In fact, he looks more German than American, I think. Okay. I'll wrap it up here. I mean, look at the helmets. Look at the helmets there. Oh, it, like a cap. In Europe, people would be having seizures. They'd be so angry seeing the lack of health and safety with these bikes. And it wraps up, the whole book wraps up with this. Nice little note here. Policemen, hell's angels, accountants, posers. There's no telling what a Harley dude does for a living. In this book is exactly why people love Harley Davidson and in equal measure exactly why they despise Harley Davidson. For me personally, I love it, but it's got everything in there. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Even the chili con carne here. is made and by the father, who's also that, in the Navy. So handmade chili con carne and the coleslaw as well. Four, handmade. Okay. Everything. Yeah. It's a proper multitasking and family and affair. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Not going on. <laughs> absolutely delicious. <laughs> I love this. This must be so old. Postbox letterbox notice. Letters containing coin, paper money or jewellery should not be posted in this box but should be registered. It's a shame. I can see these red post boxes eventually going the same way as our red phone boxes. I can see them being a thing of the past in 20 or 30 years time. It's a shame. Wesselton, it's a beautiful village. I'd never heard of it until we just decided to head to the Snug Tea Room from complete chance. If you do want to go to the little place that we ate at, book a table because it's small and it was busy the whole time we were there. So much so that they actually had to put us next to the window, not on a proper table. So definitely book. And it's even more perfect than I thought because that that is a Land Rover specialist behind us. I thought I saw, or I've seen, an unusually large amount of defenders pootling around the little lanes here. And that's because they're extremely well catered for. But I highly recommend it. It's a really, really, really nice place to come. As is everywhere in Suffolk. I know I've been saying it because I've been nostalgic about Suffolk now, knowing we're leaving. But every little village in Suffolk Picture, postcard, beautiful. Oh, look at all of the defenders. Two tucked away there. One being worked on there and one the other side of the road over there. And I've just seen this old fuel pump. It's got a coin sign there. So I don't know if you actually had to put coins in before you would fill up with fuel. 
love the fact they kept this and it looks like it's planted into this bit of the wall so it may always have been here as the main little fuel pump in the village of Wesselton. I had a bit of a concern when I when I was riding along about eight miles ago, the fuel light came on at 80 miles on the Bonneville. Usually it comes on at about 130 to 140 miles. So somewhere in between the top end rebuild and putting the exhaust on, the bikes gained an unquenchable thirst for fuel. And I have no idea why. I'm hoping it's just a blip, a one-off or something like that. Because if not, I can't be bothered to take it to a mechanic. Someone did mention in a video, thank you for this, that if I something like turn on the bike five times on and off and then let it run idle at idle for 15 minutes, that should clear the ECU and recalibrate it because it's got a new exhaust. But 80 miles to fuel like going on, there's something wrong with it. So I'm really hoping it's a one off. Otherwise, it's back to the mechanic. <laughs> we'll wrap it up there. We're off to Bury St Edmunds to pick up three cups for Monica. Yep. <laughs> so we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much everyone for coming along. Delighted to say the weather cleared, well that's a lie, it didn't clear up, but it's actually quite mild so it'll be a lovely ride back. Thanks all for watching and oh and before I go I'm hoping to go to a biker hangout in Suffolk that I've never been to before in the next video so keep an eye out for that one. Thank you all. We'll see you in the next one.